Hello and welcome again to Prohibition University in another of our short instructional videos on making alcohol at home. In today's experiment we're going to try something that we have never tried before at home and that is making vodka from potatoes. What I've just done is gone to the grocery store and I have purchased a combination of russet potatoes which I think are probably grown in Idaho and I've also purchased some Yukon Gold potatoes, um, which are growing, I believe, in Canada somewhere, possibly Prince Edward Island. Anyway, um, I've washed them, and you can see that they're sitting on the counter. I've examined all of the potatoes, and there were some that had some soft spots and some rot, and you can see here's one that I've cut, uh, cut the defective parts out of. And now, what I'm doing over here is I'm simply cutting them up into pieces on my cutting board. And here's another one that you can see that had a, a soft core and uh, definitely want to get rid of that um, undesirable material because it could interfere potentially with the fermentation. Once I've got them cut up, I'm going to uh, simply pulse them in my food processor. To something that looks like that. once I've got them all ground up in the food processor I'll be adding them to my mash kettle and from what I'm able to determine in reading scientific papers online the gelatinization point of potato that is to say the point where the structure of the potato breaks down is around 65 to 68 degrees centigrade and so once I add my ground up potatoes to my uh, pot of water on my stove, I will be using the three various enzymes that I typically use. Um, and I'll use ones from White Labs in this exercise. So there will be one that will break down the starch in and around the 68 degree centigrade level. I will be also adding one called Visco Buster, and that's designed to break down any proteins that are in the potato. And lastly, after the mash of potato has cooled a little bit, I'll be adding um, an amyloglucosidase type enzyme to uh, complete the, the breakdown of the starch. I will then let that potato mash cool down, and I will be adding probably my standard vodka yeast to uh, undertake the fermentation. So let me finish grinding these things, and then I'll resume the video, and you'll see me adding them to the water, heating the water, and adding the various enzymes in turn. Okay, so here is our uh, stock pot with our 9 liters of water, 6 kilograms of uh, potato. I have been very slowly heating it, but before I started heating it, I added a few things, which I will now draw your attention to, if I may. My tap water that I'm using is low in calcium. And as you've learned in some of my previous video installments on my website, calcium is rather essential. The enzymes um, really enjoy calcium. It, it helps them to uh, do their job more effectively. And also when it comes to fermentation, the yeast enjoys having calcium in the, uh, in the mash as well. And so to my stock pot, I simply added half a teaspoon of calcium sulfate, gypsum, to uh, raise my calcium levels up. And as I started to heat the mash, I added a thermostable alpha amylase uh, from White Labs. It's called OptiMash. And that is what then is ripping down the molecular chains of starch into simpler sugars. And I'm assuming that the potatoes also contain some manner of protein. And so I've added something called Visco Buster, also from White Labs, and that's designed to tear down the protein. And at some point uh, after I have done this preliminary tear down of the starch, I'm going to let the mash cool down a bit, and I will be adding the third and final enzyme, which they call UltraFirm, which is an amyloglucosidase, which completes the job of tearing down the starch. Now I want to show you one more thing, if I'm going to, I'm just going to switch back to the mash pot here very quickly. The temperature of the mash pot right now is at about 70. And I just want to show you, it may not be too apparent on, on the video, but uh, these potatoes have actually become almost translucent as the starch has started to break down. And you can see here the, 
the uh, degree of grind that I've subjected them to. So they're not really a fine mush. They're, they're sort of, they almost look to me like uh, the material that you would use for hash browns. All right, so the mash kettle with the potato mixture has been sitting now for an hour and the potatoes are getting soft under the influence of the heat. The problem is if I take a sample of the liquid from the mash kettle and put it on my refractometer, I'm only getting a reading of about five bricks. So we know that potatoes have a low level of starch to begin with, but somehow I'm, I need to speed up the uh, conversion of what starches are in there to, uh, to sugars. Obviously by taking it to uh, 72 degrees with the thermostable alpha amylase from White Labs is not going to do the trick. And so I'm going to reach for the, I guess what I call the heavy artillery. And here it is. Uh, this is what we call high temp A's. And this is from a company called uh, BSG. Uh, they're actually based in Ireland. This is a alpha amylase enzyme, but it is stable up to about 90 degrees C. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take this potato mash up to about 90 with this high temperature uh, heavy artillery and let's see if we can complete the conversion of the uh, starches in the potatoes. So here we go. Okay, so here we are after having added the high temperature enzyme product from BSG. Um, I've left it sitting now for about an hour and a half with that uh, enzyme in it and if I take a sample of the potatoes with a with a spoon and taste them yeah they definitely are mushy they're, they're soft they're they're cooked um, if I take a sample of, of the uh, liquid from the uh, from the brew kettle and if I run it through my refractometer Heavy sigh. Are you ready for it? I've only got seven bricks and that really underscores the fact that potatoes are mostly water. There is very little starch in a potato. So I still have one more enzyme to add here after this mash cools down a little bit, but I'm certainly uh, not optimistic and I think now we're starting to get some insight as to why you don't see a lot of craft distillers using potato. It's just not an economical raw material because of the low starch content. Anyway, let me cool this down a little bit more. I'll add the final enzyme and we'll see if that gives us a, a little bounce, but really and truly, um, I'm not expecting much more than 10 bricks on this, which will give me at the very most 5% alcohol in my fermentation. Anyway, I'll be back shortly after this is cooled down. Now I just want to show you um, something very quickly here while I wait for this uh, potato mash to cool down. Here's a small slice of uh, off of one of the potatoes. Uh, I put a couple drops of iodine, just standard tincture of iodine from the, from the local pharmacy. You'll notice that iodine in the presence of starch turns blackish or purple. I took some of the liquid from the potato mash and uh, strained it to remove any solids, added some iodine, and look what happens. Uh, very little in the way of color change. So that is telling me that I have succeeded in pretty much converting the starches in those potatoes into simpler sugars using the artificial enzymes and a long hold period and elevated temperature. Um, that's the good news. The bad news is I've still only got a reading of about seven bricks. So I still have the final enzyme to add here, which may do a little bit more in the way of improvement, but uh, um, this is going to be a pretty low alcohol mash and uh, some pretty low alcohol yields, which is kind of what I expected when I embarked on it. And now that I've experienced it, um, I really now understand why there aren't more craft distilleries using potatoes. They're just not economic. Okay, so we've added our final enzyme, the amyloglucosidase, and I've allowed the potato mash kettle to sit now for a while. I just checked my bricks concentration. 
and I'm getting about eight and a half bricks, which is going to give me no more than 5% alcohol on the ferment, so certainly not very encouraging. Um, I've just weighed out some yeast, a uh, total of nine grams, and the yeast that I'm using for this ferment is uh, from White Labs, and it is their distiller's yeast uh, designed for vodka. And I'm going to be uh, also adding some, uh, about a teaspoon of Nutristart to uh, give the ferment some extra nitrogen and vitamins to keep it going. And uh, once my mash has cooled a little bit more down to about 30 degrees, I'll be dumping it into my fermenter pail. Fermentation will take maybe three or four days. And at that point, in the second installment of this video series, you will see me running it through the copper alembic still to uh, pull the alcohols off. 